Ciao! Today's video is a technical demo from the Model Registry team. Today we want to show to you how to install the Model Registry by making use of the Model Registry operator. Then we will see some use cases like uh, training machine learning as usual using notebooks, but then register them on top of the Model Registry, do the same from a data science pipeline, and once you have a few model version indexed on your model registry, how to deploy them for machine learning inference by making use of model serving. And finally, we will have some wrap up. So to install the model registry operator is actually pretty simple. It's just a matter of following a few steps of installation and we can follow along in today's video. The first step will install a custom resource definition on top of my Kubernetes installation here. And as you can see, now a new custom resource definition is available. I can install the operator by deploying that. And uh, I can notice that because in my namespaces, currently the operator sits in its own uh, namespace. And finally, I can uh, make the installation. So I can do, I, I want to say here, kubectl apply, I have some samples here ready for today and we can follow along. We will see that now a new model registry instance is coming available. So this is uh, the very few steps that are required in order to have a model registry instance. And now we will uh, follow along in the steps that we've seen in the agenda. Cool. So we have our ODH project here uh, that we will use for today's demo. And we will start as typical from some uh, Jupyter notebooks. The project that uh, we're going to use for tutorial today is a very simple kind of a hello world. And uh, what we want to do is that uh, we have some training set. Uh, so here we're displaying an image and the label is the number three. And our goal will, produce a, will be to produce a machine learning model that will be able to make a prediction. So that if I give it an image such as this one, it will be able to predict that is the number four. So nothing too fancy, just an hello world. So what we will be doing today is that uh, we have uh, the training set. Uh, I can uh, make the training of a neural network, a very kind of like a hello world neural network to make those uh, kind of predictions. And uh, as the model has finished training, we can as well compute uh, some metrics, in this case, some accuracy score here. So I always prefer to try run the result. So here, if we give it uh, this image, okay, predicts uh, label four, which is the one that we would expect. We can save that one as an Onyx uh, type of file. So we are saving that uh, uh, as an Onyx model and we can as well dry run as well that serialization format. And again, if we give it the same uh, image, it predicts uh, the same output. This is what we would expect. I can store uh, this one on a bucket, on an S3 bucket, and then I can index that one in the model registry. So what uh, this operation is doing, as we can see, we're getting some back some ID, and this is the training uh, of a first machine learning model. If I go to the menu console here, I can as well refresh, and I can see that uh, this uh, model has been indexed. We will be doing some REST uh, uh, API exercise in just a second. Uh, before getting to that, I want to display a second step where we will do the similar exercise. Uh, so same training and test set, uh, but we using a different kind of uh, neural network. In this case, it's a convolutional neural network. So we will let it do its training job as usual. And then as the model has finished training, we can as well compute some metrics. We can dry run as usual. So if we give it uh, this image, it predicts four. We can save these uh, new machine learning models again as an Onyx file. Uh, I always prefer to dry run it. So again, if we give it that image, it spits me out. It's label number four. This is what we would expect. I can save that one into the bucket and then I can also register this uh, new model version inside of my model registry. And uh, if we go to the menu console here, and as well, we will have the two models that uh, are being referenced by the model registry. 
So we don't have yet a web UI for our model registry, but for a purpose of a technical demo, we can use uh, some command line and invoke uh, the REST API of the model registry. So in this case, uh, what I'm going to do is that uh, first command, I'm going to display the registered model. So MNIST, this is actually a very typical name for this uh, lower type of model because it's based on the MNIST dataset. I can ask uh, as well, model registry, can you please tell me uh, which model version do you know? And uh, as we can see, we have uh, the two version that uh, we indexed from the two notebook run that I just created. Uh, so as well, uh, here you can see some ideas that uh, will be meaningful later in order to connect it to model serving. And finally as well, I can use uh, and display some model artifacts. So in this case, uh, the, the, this uh, artifact uh, will belong to the two version that uh, we've seen. And uh, as well, uh, we can notice that uh, those are referencing the uh, buckets that uh, we've been just displaying. And as well for completeness, uh, I can also display the model artifact belonging to version ID number four. So in this case, uh, the what was displayed as the model version number two is now my model artifact here. So I have uh, all the information that will allow me later, we will see that in the video, in order to go and deploy that into model serving. So we can move now to showcasing similar steps using data science pipelines. So we can focus now on our data science pipeline. I will. Uh, I have already the a pipeline defined that will do similar step as uh, the one that we have seen and I will just create a run here. Typically, data science pipeline takes some input parameters that for instance can influence the training of the model or how to validate that one. And uh, as this uh, pipeline is starting to run, I will actually uh, describe it in a bit more detail. So what I have uh, here is the definition of my data science pipeline and it consists uh, of a few steps. Specifically, the first one, I will uh, train uh, my machine learning model, similar to what we see in, in the notebooks. Then I will have some step that uh, I may want uh, to use in order to validate the model. Uh, say for instance, that uh, to make sure that uh, the model matches some actually accuracy or other metrics. And finally, once uh, the models uh, uh, passes validation, then I may, can index them on model registry by performing the two steps. So as usual, I will store the model in an S3 compatible bucket, and then finally I can index that in the model registry. So we can see that uh, now the, we can, uh, what has been happening is that uh, the model has finished training. We can follow as well for the logs. And uh, here what is uh, doing now is that uh, it will perform the validation of the model once the validation of the model has been completed, I will evaluate the metrics if they pass a certain criteria, and then I can decide what is the next step that in this case, it will index uh, that one in the model registry. So we can see on the logs that uh, the model has been stored in the bucket, the one that has been doing on the, the one training from the data science pipeline, and then is indexed on the model registry. Here we can see some of the output. So as we seen earlier, I can do some uh, uh, REST API invocation. And for instance, if I go back and to ask what are the model version, then now they will be three because uh, the, these first two version are the one that we have been doing from the notebooks. And this is the third one that I've been doing from the data science pipeline. So now we have uh, basically three version of my machine learning models that given an image, it will predict uh, the number output label. And then uh, we have indexed that on the model registry using uh, these operations. Before moving to the next uh, step, I just want to highlight that this is just a demo data science pipeline. The important part that uh, we wanted to bring relevance here is that uh, the indexing of the model that is done in this step, for instance, may have not happened if uh, for whatever reason, while we try to validate the model, then we evaluated that uh, that, that model does not match our requirements and therefore we might want to do something else. So in this case, uh, this step has not been executed. In this step, for instance, I may choose not to index the model on the model registry, but this is what we have been doing with this step. And if I go to the 
uh, menu bucket, I will notice that as well. These are the uh, models that I have so far on my storage, and these are the three versions that I have indexed in the model registry. So where are we here now? We are in a situation where basically we have been using Jupyter Notebooks, uh, we have been using Data Science Pipeline, and we have stored some metadata in our model registry. It's important to highlight that the model registry here is not performing an orchestration role. Basically, we are using the model registry as a source of truth for the metadata of my machine learning models. And now what we want to do is that we want to move and actually provide some model serving based on some information that we have on the model registry. But it's not the role of the model registry to do this action. What uh, is the role here that we will be seeing uh, coming along is that uh, we will put some entity information inside the model registry and uh, thanks to, to the typical Kubernetes pattern, we will have the model controller that will perform some reconciliation loop in order to deploy the model that we want on the model serving. We can see how to do that in the following steps. So speaking of deployment of our machine learning model, indexed and registered on the model registry and deploy that for model serving, we can observe that in my project, I have here already a model server name called MM Server one available. If I go to the model registry and I ask to display which are the serving environment that uh, this uh, model registry knows about, we will see that there is one. And this is because uh, in the model registry controller, what is happening is that there is a reconciliation loop happening. What basically ends up happening is that um, there is a controller reconciliation loop that uh, given the status of my Kubernetes cluster in this case is providing some entities inside the model registry. And now what I can want to do is that I want to, in the model registry to signify I want to deploy a given model on a, a specific model server. I can do that uh, using some command line options. So I can move here uh, to the command line. And what I'm going to do is that by issuing this command, I can display what uh, are the inference service that I want uh, to have. And uh, what this step is been doing is that, uh, so I've entered an entity here, a reconciliation loop will trigger because a new entity will be noticed and therefore my new customer resource will be defined for model serving. So the model registry here is not an active orchestrator. It's just a repository of metadata and my source of truth. What I want to do for this uh, model controller, if I go back uh, here, so I can notice here that uh, my model has been uh, deployed for model service. And uh, if I go here, I will notice that uh, the uh, model is now available and an inference point can be consumed. What I can do as well is that uh, if I go to the command line, I can actually undeploy this Ser this inference service, which is ID number six, uh, and I will tell it uh, to undeploy. What will end up happening is that uh, that deployment will be removed uh, from the cluster. And as we notice now, the model is no longer available for inference. So just to recap, what has been happening with these two operations on the common line is that I've created an entity in the model registry to signify I want to deploy this model that the model registry knows about. And the model controller triggers a reconciliation loop, which based on this metadata will create the customer resource, in this case for model mesh, in order for the models to be served. So again, this is just uh, to recap that uh, the model registry does not play the role of an active orchestrator, but we're using that as a repository and source of truth of a model metadata. So just uh, to conclude on the end-to-end, -end, what I can do now here is that I can ask uh, the model registry to redeploy that model. So again, what we have been doing here is that uh, we are creating some entity in the model registry, a reconciliation loop will trigger, will create the custom resource for the model mesh model serving. So the end result is that I will have an inference endpoint that can, I can make use of uh, for my trained model. 
So now that uh, the inference endpoint is available, I will need it uh, later. So I'm just copying it uh, here uh, for my use. And uh, then uh, what I can do is that uh, I can go here to my project and actually I can take the role of developer. So I can go to my data science project and uh, now that I have a model uh, uh, deployed for inference, I can actually create some intelligent application in order uh, to make use of that inference endpoint. So this is just a very simple uh, mocked up application in order just to give them an idea that uh, what we want here uh, at the end of the day is that uh, we want to serve some intelligence application on the uh, Kubernetes. And uh, if I go here, this is my endpoint. Uh, so if I draw here a two, I will see here, uh, it's just a very mocked up application. So the index number zero, one, two, this seems to be the biggest uh, uh, probable one. So the uh, system thinks uh, this is a number two. I can try again uh, with uh, drawing the number five. And if I go and see the results, zero, one, two, three, four, and five, as uh, we would expect. So this is, of course, a very simplistic application, but I hope that it proves the point of uh, what uh, and uh, sort of like wrap up what uh, we have been seeing today. So up to the serving of the intelligent application. So what uh, we've been seeing today is how to use the model registry operator in order to deploy our model registry. Once we had the model registry available, we used some Jupyter notebooks in order to do some machine learning training. We have seen as well a similar concept from the data science pipeline. So we stored always uh, our machine learning trained model in some storage, and uh, we have used the model registry in order to register, index this model on the model reg registry instance that we had available. We don't have yet a GUI web application in order to see uh, the model registry, the metadata that it contains, but we use some command line, some command line that demonstrated that uh, the model registry plays the role of the metadata source of truth. And while not being an active orchestrator in my cluster, by making some operation on the model registry, some reconciliation loop triggers. And uh, in the case that we've seen that uh, happening, with the model serving because I'm instructed the model to say, hey, this is a model that I would like to be deployed. And uh, the model controller, seeing this data available in model registry, knows what to do, the semantic that it applies on Kubernetes. And what has created is a model serving endpoint that uh, we've seen here. And uh, we as well seen that the scope of this is to drive workloads on top of Kubernetes and so our intelligent application that make use of that machine learning model is now available and we can use it on our cluster. I hope this was an interesting end-to-end -end demo of the model registry capabilities. If you found this content interesting, please go and uh, um, mention that to the model registry team and I will see you in the next one. Bye.